Hi folks, good to be with you this morning. Um, I wanted to uh, remind you that tonight we will be having our Bible study time. Uh, what we've been working on is from a class I took uh, years ago uh, back at seminary uh, about the uh, the realities of the afterlife and uh, and it it was a fascinating uh, study it was a fascinating class I really enjoyed it wanted to do it ever since so I, I got started on it if you're not um, you know if you're not caught up if you haven't uh, if you haven't been a part of that from the beginning uh, jump on in anytime because where wherever we start from that day will be worth starting from um, I hope <laughs> anyway and uh, tonight I'm going to sidetrack off of that a little bit to specifically deal with one passage of scripture so it's it's going to be less a repetition of what we learned directly in the class than it is going to be looking at a passage of scripture which is going to focus in 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 verses 1 through 10 2 uh, Corinthians 5 1 through 10 so that'll take place tonight uh, I'm gonna do it at 6 Normally it was a seven o'clock thing, although last time I did it at six as well because we've got a we have a Zoom meeting at seven, so I will be doing that at six and uh, we'll have the Zoom meeting at seven and you don't have to be there for that, but uh, we'll uh, we'll be looking at uh, the uh, title of the course was how to have a nice afterlife, and uh, I think it's uh, uh, I think it's really uh, was an interesting thing to me and hopefully it'll interest you as well. Um, we will be having church next Sunday. Um, the uh, The flowers went well uh, last Sunday uh, on Easter, and I want to thank everybody for participating and being a part of that worship time together. Um, it uh, it was beautiful. It really was, and uh, and it was significant. And God was there. Uh, somebody had uh, you know posted a response and uh, and I said uh, my response to that post was God was in the house and uh, and then I said your house and our house and um, believe that that really was the case there was a, a strong sense of the spirit's presence and so uh, no reason to anticipate that that's going to change God is in the midst of this and again as the uh, as the Veggie Tales remind us God is bigger than the boogeyman. So, if you're ready, let's go ahead and get started. Let's pray. O oh God, who through the grace of the Holy Spirit does pour the gift of love into the hearts of your faithful people, grant us health, both of mind and body, that we may love you with our whole strength and with glad hearts may perform those things which are pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. Uh, the reading that uh, is consistent through the week in this particular study book is the psalm reading. And uh, the psalm is the 46th psalm. You are welcome to open up your Bible and find the 46th psalm. And uh, that's where I'm going to kind of focus on uh, at this point. So um, 46th Psalm, I can't tell you what page it's on because it's not going to be on the same page in my Bible as it is on yours, almost certainly. All right, so if you head there, you can uh, you can catch up. This is for the director of music of the Sons of Korah, according to the Alamoth, a song. So this was designed to be sung. And while it probably wouldn't make the top 40 today, um, it obviously was in the top 46 at uh, at that point in time so uh, it uh, there's something about singing our faith that has tremendous power and uh, I may do uh, do a song tonight so we'll see anyway God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble therefore we will not fear though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. 
He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. May God add his blessing to this reading from his word. I uh, I first read this on Monday morning, and, and it struck me that uh, it, it definitely was going to be worth talking about, you know. Um, but I had some other plans for yesterday and uh, on Monday itself. So I, I do want to get back to it, though, and talk about it today. And, and I think that this is such a, a powerful passage because it really speaks to where we're at right now. You know, this is talking about God's action in the whole world. Not just for Jerusalem, but for the whole world. And so uh, it really is something that's worth looking at, thinking about, and uh, and seeing what it is that God is, is saying, what he's doing in the world. And it, it, uh, it really is a, an amazing thing. So what does it say? Well, it says God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Uh, what does that mean? Well, it means God is the thing that really gives us strength it is god is the refuge to which we run a refuge is someplace you go when you're in trouble maybe it's your fault maybe it's not your fault but a refuge is a place you go when you're in trouble to protect your life to protect your safety so god is a refuge he is our refuge he has made himself available to us as an ever-present help in trouble well, folks, we're in trouble. No other way to no other way to deal with it uh, or to approach it or to see it. We're in trouble. We're in trouble as a nation. We're in trouble as individuals. We are in trouble as a world. And uh, and well, we may argue about the severity of what's going on and what we ought to be doing about it. There is no question that when there is a disease like this that is killing a relatively large percentage of people who contract it and that covers the whole world, we're in trouble. We need a refuge. We need a place to go for strength and encouragement and blessing. And, uh, and our refuge and our strength is God. Now, that doesn't mean, uh, just uh, recently a pastor died who had made some self-aggrandizing comments and uh, was uh, basically doing things that... Uh, he was told he wasn't supposed to do, but he did him anyway because he was a pastor, and by golly, he represented God and so forth. And he contracted the virus and died. I'm not saying that's God's punishment on him at all. I, I, I That's totally between him and God. Some of the things he said, though, definitely leave those of us who are calling on faith in God looking sort of foolish in the eyes of the world. But don't ever let that deter you. Why? Because the rest of the world doesn't get it. Our hope is not just in the here and now, although we do have hope in the here and now. We do have a God who is our refuge and our strength right now. But we also look beyond the here and now to the there and then. And uh, and what a great and wonderful thing it is to have that faith. Now, I do not want to contract this virus. I do not want to die from it. I don't even want to get sick from it. And I don't want anybody I know to get sick from it. It's a terrible thing. There's no question about it. It is awful. And what it does is awful. But God is my refuge and my strength. Now, here, and then there. So uh, there is a security in that that goes beyond this life. And, and in, until you understand that, uh, everything is pie in the sky by and by when you die, you know. But it becomes, it becomes something of substance when we realize that God is our ever-present refuge and that he has a plan for us from here to there. 
So we, uh, we don't just live hoping for the future. We live in the hope of the moment as well and what God is going to do in us and to us and through us and with us. So our God is our refuge and our strength and ever-present help in trouble. He doesn't, he doesn't always cure all our ills. He doesn't do what we would like him to do at all times. But uh, he is our refuge, the place we go to find comfort and, and encouragement and protection. And, uh, and because of what Jesus did, our protection extends way beyond this life. And, uh, and, and, you know, maybe we need a little more of that sort of an attitude going in our lives. A lot of people are very prone to say, well, you know, if God really, if God was really God, he wouldn't let this happen or that happen. And, and the fact of the matter is that we live in a very broken world and this and that is going to happen. However, what God has offered us is something far beyond that. And, uh, and, and that's what we're talking about, a refuge, a security. That whatever happens, God is there for us. And so what does that do for us? Well, in verse 2 it says, Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. This, you know, it, and it's an image. It's really fascinating because throughout the Bible, water has this, has this immense image. In the Roman Greek and Roman world, the Roman Hellenistic world, the fact is that... Um, the sea was sort of seen as a euphemism for um, the uh, you know life without a sense of God involved, or for the Greeks and the Romans, obviously the gods. It was sort of like this this ethereal other, um, you know, and uh, and it didn't represent anything good. And even for the Christians. Uh, in the early church, you know, and you see this in, in Revelation, um, there's a sense in which the sea is this boundless realm of evil. That's a bit of an overstatement, but nonetheless, there's a, there's that going on. And, and so you have this imagery. Now, in in Christian imagery, there's also this, this imagery of water as being this amazing, wonderful, God-given blessing, right? Uh, the Israelites are delivered through the Red Sea. They're delivered from that last element of attempting to take them back into slavery. The uh, uh, the Jewish people are given rules and regulations around cleansing, and water represents this this cleansing that makes you right before God. Um, and and while a lot of that was like wash your hands, you know, uh, the uh, Jewish people had that rule: you had to wash your hands before you eat. And it was a religious rule, but of course there was physical ramifications to it. God knew what he was doing when he said that to him. God knows what he's doing when he says anything to us. So, you know, here, here's this dichotomy of water as representing, and Jesus, what does Jesus say about himself? I'm the living water, right? You know, and I'll give you myself, and you'll never thirst. So you have this dichotomy between this realm of water being salvation and this realm of water being the great evil that is so destructive. And here you see this absolute destruction part of water. You know, it's like mountains are falling into the heart of the sea. Uh, you know, the land is collapsing into the ocean and the waters are roaring and foaming. And, and as the waters roar and foam, uh, they, they attack the mountains more, you know, with their surging. It, it's like... Uh, it's sort of like you start, the mountains fall into the sea, and then it just leads to more destruction of what's left of the mountains. But then in the very next verse, it says, There is a river whose streams, more water, make glad the city of God. It's that It takes us back to that, uh, that sense of salvation in the water. A river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. Who do you think that stream is? You know, uh, they didn't get it, I I'm sure at that point in time um, in a very arid land of course streams would be hugely important and and wonderful and blessed and and uh, and you know if there was a stream it, it would be well known and and, uh, and and loved rejoiced over you know um, little did they know that this is also a reference to the Lord that water pouring out from the throne you know the living water there's a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, 
Okay, so this is the place where the Most High dwells. This is the river itself, the the glad the gladness of the city. You know, because God is within her, so she will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Once you can see what's going on, right? When the light dawns, Jesus says, "What else does he say?" He says, "I'm the living water." He also says, "I'm the light of the world." You know, so when the dawn breaks at the break of day. God's help is poured out upon us. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. Um, you have a sense of that going on right now? You know, just this destruction. And people are locked down and, and, and people are desperate and they're terrified. Um, at the very least, the heart of a nation is falling. Everywhere. In almost every nation out there. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice and the earth melts. You know, you think this destruction is something? Wait until you see the power of God displayed. You know, so it's sort of like it's it's comparing the issues of the world, I think, at some level, with uh, with the power of God. And we see the power of the issues, and it causes us to fear. But you know what? God God has the power to do so much more like that. Then uh, it, it picks up from there. And uh, it says, the Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And, and then uh, the psalmist goes on and, and he encourages people with these words. Come and see the works of the Lord. And, and he says, first of all, come and see the desolations he has brought on the earth. Okay. What, what causes more desolation on the earth than anything else? Um... You know, that God does, we see the, the natural destructive forces of, I'm not saying again that God is out destroying stuff, but we see the forces of nature as being this huge and horrible thing. From the human standpoint, the most destructive thing that we can do is war. And, and, and so the psalmist addresses that. He says, uh, uh, God, he makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. Okay, so... See what God can do in destruction and then take what man can do in destruction and, and, and look what God is going to do. He's going to destroy our destructive power. Makes wars to cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow, shatters the spear, he burns the shields with fire. Now what is a shield? A shield is a defensive weapon. You know what? We don't need a defensive weapon if we have our refuge and our strength in God. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And then again, psalmist reminds in, uh, in what probably is the chorus of the song. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. So today, uh, and, and you know, some of you are sheltering in place all by yourself. And I am sure that that is more difficult than I can imagine because I've got my wife here and she's got her husband here and uh, we have our daughter here and she has her parents here you know and that's only three by the way if you were trying to add all that up um, but it, it really it, it, there's a there's a wonderful aspect of that if I was all by myself I probably would be going crazy so I, I know that it's really hard but you know what? You aren't alone. You are not by yourself because God is with you. God is your refuge and your strength and a very present help. Very present. Very present. Always there in times of trouble. And we're in trouble. But God is bigger than the boogeyman. And God is bigger than COVID-19. And, well, we have to go through this. God is bigger than this. And, uh, and you know, there's going to come a time when we're going to see that clearly for ourselves. In dramatic and absolute ways. Unequivocal. Undeniable. Irrefutable. God is our refuge and our strength. So lean on God today. If there's a place in your in your life that God is kind of witnessing to you that you are not 
uh, paying close enough attention to that he would like to help you deal with, work on. Um, let God be your refuge and your strength in that. Because that's what he wants for you and what he wants to do in you. And the only thing that stands in the way is us. So, you know, let's, uh, let's do that. Let the stream from heaven roll in our door. All right. Well, may God bless you this day and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May you find a refuge and a strength. Amen.